Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be on cardiac lecture number two, heart sounds, pulse, and hemodynamics. Continue my lecture on normal hemodynamics and normal heart structure. Okay, let's get going. All right, so previously in the previous lecture, we talked about the heart structure. And today we're going to talk about S1, S1, and S2, which you might have heard it called LUB and dub. Okay, what does this mean? These are the valves closing. And more specifically, which valves? Well, in the structure we talked about the location of the valves. Try pulling my aorta. And we said that that's the order that the blood will come in contact. So try pulling my aorta. And these two valves here, the tricuspid and the mitral, are your AV valves. And the sound that you hear when they're closing is S1. So S1 is the closing of the valves. And that's important for hemodynamics, to maintain hemodynamics and to maintain cardiac output and uh, perfusion in the body. So the first thing is, is that I call S1 a B S mit. All right, because it's the mitral and tricuspid and it's heard best before systolic. So when we're isolating heart sounds, and we'll talk about that in our, in our next part, but when we're listening to it, we're going to listen to the sound before systolic. Okay, next is your S2 or your dub. Now your Dub is your, uh, what I call a bad P. And P for pulmonic, right? So pulmonic and aortic. And it's best heard before diastolic. So that's about it. That's it for your normal hemodynamics for valves. And what I mean by that is that your S1 and S2 are the closing of the valves, and your AV valves are best heard before systolic, mitral, and tricuspid, and your S2, which is your semilunar valves, are best heard before diastolic, which is your aortic and pulmonic. Okay, so let's talk about the heart structure and where to listen to these. So when looking at the chest, the mnemonic is all pigs eat too much. And you might have heard this called ape to man, but all pigs eat too much. And the way that we do this is, is that we write one, two, three, four, five. So there's one heart and then all pigs, A and P, eat herbs, four, tricuspid, and then five is mitral, much. So all pigs eat too much or ape to man. Okay, so what do these numbers mean? All right, well, one heart. Okay, we're talking about one heart. All right, so second intercostal space here is your aortic. And that's your pulmonic, herb. Herb is the third intercostal space. Mm -hmm. I always remember three spaces, three letters in herb, and third intercostal space. Now, what does that mean? Well, third to two... 3 to 2, right here, see this 2? It's the best place to hear S2. All right, next one is tricuspid, fourth intercostal space. And then the fifth intercostal space is a mitral valve midclavicular line. And that's the, the apex, it's also called. And that's where we listen to the apical heart rate. And that should be anywhere from 60 to 100. So normal heart sounds should be S1, S2. These are the locations that you can find it. And these are your heart sounds. So when you're looking at heart sounds and you're listening to heart sounds, 
you're going to be looking at um, the stethoscope in the way that you're going to use your stethoscope. And the way that you use your stethoscope is um, there's two sides to the stethoscope. You have the diaphragm, D, and you have your bell, okay, B before D. So the diaphragm is the larger part. Okay, when you are isolating heart sounds, you're listening to the bell. That's acute. So when we talked about previously acute versus chronic, um, chronic would be down here, your diaphragm. Anytime you listen with your apical pulse, you listen to the apical pulse first, and then if you hear something wrong with S1 or S2, then you flip it and use the bell, and you put them on the left side to listen more to isolate what problem is going on. All right, so let's talk about the next thing. So we talked about heart sounds, S1, S2. These are normal findings. And now we're going to be talking about um, pulses, also normal findings. So pulses are always uh, peripheral pulse. And pulses should be normal, regular. And pedals... Um, if you can feel pedals on a normal pulse, um, their mean arterial pressure is greater than 65. Okay, and that's a good sign. So in NCLEX question, pulses, radial pulses, and, and pedal pulses is all, all about perfusion and whether or not um, it's procedural. So if you see a procedure with pulses and you see absent, that's acute. All right. Next thing, um, pulses, is why do we uh, why do we need pulses and um, and heart sounds and uh, blood pressure and hemodynamics? Well, it's all about um, cardiac output, and we we measure cardiac output from blood pressure. And see my lecture on blood pressure and causes and stuff. But when we're looking at hemodynamics, um, blood pressure is usually the first sign. And if it's less than, um, if it's down, and, and the mean arterial pressure is less than 65, it's affecting cardiac output. And what that means is, is cardiac output is the fluid portion, the blood perfusing O2 to the fingers and toes. And cardiac output is usually, uh, there is a measurement for it, but that's a hemodynamic, um, and that is four to eight, oops, but we usually see assessment, and assessment is everything with nursing and um, recognizing when the boat is coming, and this is what we're going to start to focus on is this boat, and what does that boat mean? Well, boat equals problems. And what I'm going to start to talk about is as we move into cardiac lecture number three, um, we're going to start to talk a little bit more about hemodynamics and what's the problems going under the heart and what we need to start focusing on when we start looking at the assessment. Because our assessment is going to find and tell us that the boat is coming. And so there's going to be two concepts. is either the boat is coming, and what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the heart rate, for example. The heart rate is 60 to 100. Okay. Well, we know that's a normal range. And when it's 60 to 100, um, that's normal findings. But if it's greater than 100, well, that means the boat is here. <laughs> it means that there's a problem going on right now. Um, the boat coming would be like 90. Okay, 96. Because why is that little old lady sitting in the bed tacking away at a heart rate of 96? It doesn't make sense. And so that's what this class will be about. It's going to be about looking at the problems before they happen and seeing it and being that nurse and focusing on that problem and basically putting interventions into place before we get there. 
So we're going to continue to look at the uh, structure of the heart, and then we're going to look at hemodynamics next lecture in cardio lecture number three. You, my name is Camp. This is Nursing Camp. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, also on nursingcamp.com. That's it for me, and nurse on.